Ladies and gentlemen, from the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice, Deacon Gerald Celenti. Hello, everybody. This is Deacon Gerald Celenti of the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice. F peace? Ah. Not a word of peace coming out of the mouths of uh, the two people that are the candidates for the Disney White House, Minnie Mouse or Donald Duck. Not a word about peace, only war. Yep. Peace is a dirty word. And Minnie Mouse is selling the line of freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Oh, the freedom? No jab, no job? The freedom that your political gang is robbing us from? Oh, you remember? They were going to put in a misinformation czar? There's no freedom. And it's only getting worse. So, again, not a word about peace, and the Israel genocide keeps going on, but it's not news in America. No, no, the big news is some uh, five bodies located on wrecked yacht. It's only going on for a week. Some rich guy's yacht went down in a storm off the coast of Sicily. That's big news. Oh, and they show the big pictures of them getting the bodies that they found in the water. Yep. They don't show the Palestinians starving to death, being houses being blown to smithereens. Some two million of them in a living in a tiny area smaller than Manhattan. No, they don't show that. Kill them all you want. Their only Palestinian lives don't matter. No, you only have to support Israel. That's the way it is. And again, I don't want to hear this garbage that you're an anti-Semite because you're against genocide. Israel, this is the propaganda they show. This was from Tuesday's Wall Street Journal. Israel accepts U.S. proposal, Blinken says. Total lie. Total lie. Hamas denies backing off from peace talks. Hamas has rejected President Joe Biden's claim that Hamas is, quote, backing off from a ceasefire hostage deal. This is from Financial Times. While insisting that the U.S. is yielding to Israel's interests in negotiations to bring an end to the war. People familiar with the latest talks said they had focused on the question of Israel's presence on the border between Egypt and Gaza, known as the Philadelphia Corridor. But U.S. President Biden said that while a potential deal which the U.S. and Arab states see as the biggest wave of avoiding regional war in the Middle East was, quote, still in play, and he said, quote, Hamas is backing off. A total lie, according to what's being reported. Netanyahu in recent weeks insisted that Israeli forces remain in the Philadelphia corridor and demanded re and a demand repeatedly rejected by Hamas, which is called the bridging proposal, a coup, against the terms previously agreed. That's right. Previously agreed. Even in the New York Times. On Tuesday, as Mr. Blinken traveled to Egypt and Qatar, Qatar to push for an agreement, Hamas said it was eager to reach a ceasefire, but that the latest American proposal was, quote, a reversal from what they had agreed to. 
American proposal appeared to conform a new demand added by Mr. Netanyahu. All right. Total lies. They're not backing down. And Netanyahu is doing it despite what his military wants. Netanyahu's military at odds over border. This is from Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper. Netanyahu's war goal is not the hostages' return. It's the occupation of Gaza. That's right. You remember, we quoted Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, saying what valuable waterfront property that is and how they should move the Palestinians out into the Negev Desert. This is disgusting. And totally supported by the two parties in America. Fears of famine rise as Gaza food aid slows. Financial times. Food supplies into Gaza have diminished even further in these two months since international experts raised the threat of famine in the enclave, according to the World Food Program. We clearly don't manage to bring enough food into Gaza, they said. On and on. Yeah. Talking about Biden and the United States lying. This is from Haaretz, August 3rd. Yeah. A number of weeks ago. U.S. official Haaretz. Biden realized Netanyahu lied to him about hostage deal. He was lying to him about the hostages. He was not saying it publicly yet, but the meeting between them, he specifically told him, stop bullshitting me. There's no peace deal. He doesn't, Netanyahu doesn't want one. But Kamala Harris, the nominee for president, who we forecast a month ago will win the election, said last week, Vice President Harris asked question, asked outside a campaign event in Pennsylvania whether Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is prepared to agree to cease fire. I will not speak for him, but I will tell you these conversations are ongoing and we're not giving up. How about stop sending the weapons of death and you just did another $20 billion deal to keep slaughtering the innocent people in Gaza under the lie that they're being used as human shields by Hamas so Israel has every right to slaughter them. Ayan Omar, who's a um, Congress representative in the United States, this is quoted by Haaretz. She slammed Secretary of State Anthony Blinken during a press conference in Chicago on Wednesday for failing to end the Gaza war. Quote, now ask yourselves, how does our Secretary of State travel 11 times begging for an end to the situation that we truly have continued to provide the bombs and the weapons that are creating the situation. How do we allow? Where is our patriotism? Where is our dignity? How do we allow the Secretary of State to go to Israel, say we are close to securing a ceasefire now for the 11th time, to leave for Egypt only for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to have a press conference right after him and say, we are not taking a deal that ends the war. How are we not ashamed that this is the humiliation that our administration's representatives are faced with, she said. 
11 times they've been lying about the ceasefire as the war's been going on for, what, 11 months. So, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, is totally pro-murder. You know, I hear this line all the time. If only women were in charge, we'd have peace. <laughs> oh, yeah, Hillary Clinton, when asked, How'd you feel when you found out that Muammar Gaddafi was killed? We came, we saw he died. Yeah. Madeleine Albright, when asked about the 500,000 children under the age of five that died because of Bill Clinton's sanctions, what he did to Iraq, and Leslie Stahl, 60 Minutes. And Leslie Stahl asked her, was the price of 500,000 dead Iraqi children worth it? And Madeleine Albright said, yes, it is. Oh, and talking about the Libyan war brought to you by Hillary Clinton, Samantha Power, and Susan Rice. Oh, and I forgot Condoleezza Rice. The next mushroom cloud you see will be coming from Iraq, lying us into that war. And now Kamala Harris. Yep, warmongering as can be. As commander-in-chief, this is a quote, I will ensure America always has the strongest, most lethal fighting force in the world. Isn't that nice? A lethal fighting force to keep slaughtering people all over the world as democracy is stolen from the American people. What's your favorite war? Ah, you like the Korean War, huh? No, no, I like the Vietnam War better than that. Oh, how about the Afghan War, the longest war in American history? Light into that one. How about the Iraq War? Well, the Yemen War is beautiful, you love it, eh? And now supporting the Israel war and the Ukraine war. This is our commander in chief. Yep. Five days, be this is a quote. Before Russia attacked Ukraine, I met with President Zelensky to warn him about Russia's plan to invade. I helped mobilize a global response of 50 countries to defend Putin's aggression. How come you don't stop Israel's aggression? Oh, that doesn't count. Only Putin's aggression counts. Israel could slaughter all they want. Oh, the numbers coming from Lancet and others are showing like about 125,000 plus Palestinians who die. Over 40,000 already dead. I will stand strong with Ukraine. Oh, yeah, you're going to stand strong, huh? A warmonger. What happened to this if only women were in charge? How come no peace? With respect to the war in Gaza, President Biden and I are working around the clock because now is the time to get a hostage deal and ceasefire done. Ready? Let me be clear. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself. Nobody else has the right to defend itself. Israel could kill anybody that they want. Well, she didn't say that. I said that. She ended it with defend itself. And I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself. After they slaughter everybody that they want and the countries retaliate, the United States will be there to help escalate World War III. Because the people of Israel must never again face the horror that the terrorist organization Hamas caused on October 7th, including the unspeakable sexual violence and the massacre of young people at a music festival. 
How about the slaughter that's been going on for some 75 years of the Palestinian people by Israel? That doesn't count. Oh, what about 1,200 people died from Hamas? Oh, and according to Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper, Israel's Israel killed the Hannibal Directive, killed about half of them. And how many Palestinians are dead? Oh, they don't count. Oh, the Hamas terrorists, but not the Israeli terrorists. Yep. I will never hesitate to take whatever action is necessary to defend our forces and our interests against Iran and the Iran-backed terrorists. If only women were in charge. This is the same militaristic lies and hate coming out of the mouths of the Trump, the Bidens, the Obamas, the Clintons, the Bushes. One murderous group after another. Don't get angry, Salenti. No, no, no. Not allowed to be angry. Yep. He who is not angry when there is just cause for anger is immoral. Why? Because anger looks to the good of justice. And if you can live amid injustice without anger... You are immoral as well as unjust, said St. Thomas Aquinas. Yep. The warmonger in chief. Yep. Yep. One, one, one. Then she ends it by saying, thank you, God bless you, may God bless the United States. Like God you're talking about. Not the God that I believe in. God doesn't bless wars. Again, we had forecast she's going to win. Just be more of the same. Listen to the stupidity and arrogance of this. Again, I can't stand either of them. They both have a record of criminality, supporting murder. To Joe Biden, Mr. President, when I think about the path we have tra traveled together, I am filled with gratitude. Your record is extraordinary, as history will show. Wait, who are they talking to? Who? What? What? Has, what, what? 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 Extraordinary things is this? out of his mind, guy that's sucked off the public tip for some 60 years done. Nothing. This, they call America democracy. We got the same two parties running the show for how many hundred years? Plus, plus. No third parties allowed. No new views allowed. It's a crime syndicate that people call a government. So we're having a peace and freedom rally up here with Occupy Peace. Go to OccupyPeace.com, OccupyPeace.com. On September 28th, Jajanju Napolitano, Scott Ritter, Max Blumenthal, Anya Parampol, and others. We're going to music, and we want to get a million people here. We want to close down the streets and bring peace. And we can't do it alone. We need your help. So please consider supporting to Occupy Peace because it's the billionaire's gave us a billion dollars for peace, we'd have peace tomorrow. But they don't want peace. They could care less. All they want is more money. So thank you for tuning in. And when you say God bless the United States, God bless you. And uh, the God that you believe in. And I don't want to hear anybody tell me I got to believe in their God, not telling you to believe in my God. So take it easy. I don't want to hear this baloney that God gave you the land. You stole the land. And I don't want to hear this baloney that you're the chosen people. God doesn't choose people. The people that God chooses, according to Naomi Wolf, a Jewish woman, are the people of the spirit. 
that the creator wants the people to have. Religion has nothing to do with it. Ethnicity has nothing to do with it. Just like Kamala Harris's husband bragging, I'm Jewish, I'm proud to be Jewish. I don't brag, I'm Italian, I'm pr pr proud to be Italian. I'm proud to be an American. These are foreign countries and not my interest. I believe in the founding fathers. George Washington, don't get involved in any foreign entanglements. Don't love a nation, don't hate a nation, because if you do, you become a slave to them. And we become a slave to Israel, to Ukraine, and other nations. And that's not the American way. So thank you for tuning in. And please do what you can to contribute to Occupy Peace and the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace, and Justice. We can't do it without any money. It's as simple as that. Thank you.